I have always been fascinated with games that have a procedurally generated world. Ever since I played Minecraft as a kid 14 years ago, there's a certain magic that cannot be captured the same way in a handcrafted game. There's also a certain level of jank that makes it better. Finding rare generation bugs is like a treasure hunt. There are many different ways to create procedural game worlds, and I did explore a couple of different options before settling on what we have now, which is something that is similar to how Minecraft does theirs. Unlike Minecraft, our game is not 3D, it is top-down 2D. This makes it easier, but it also gives us some extra flexibility. We don't need to worry about performance as much as we are not generating anything below ground. If you've ever seen an image like this, or like this, or this, they are all noise. To be completely honest with you, I have no idea how any of these are generated. I don't need to know. We are in 2025, I know how to copy paste code, and I don't like reinventing the wheel. Mostly, I used Perlin noise. This is also used by Minecraft, but it was not invented by Minecraft. It was developed by Ken Perlin in the 1980s, or at least that's what Wikipedia told me. I'm just a game dev, I don't know. Another way to represent noise like this is through numbers. For the sake of simplicity, let's say we have a small 5x5 area that we want to generate in our game. We then tell the computer to generate us a Berlin noise map for that area, and it could look like this. This in itself doesn't really give us enough information to make a believable world. But now let's tell the computer that any square that has a numeric representation lower than zero is water, and any higher value is grass. Then we get something like this. Now I think you can see how it is possible to create some form of world using this noise. But you may also be filled with more questions than answers. The first question I would ask is how would it be possible to place more complex things like trees? There are many different ways to achieve this, but one of the easiest ones is to generate multiple layers of noise and using them together to figure out what should be placed where. For the sake of this demo, let's generate another layer of noise just like the first one. You can now combine this with the first layer, for example placing a flower only where the first layer is land and the second layer is above a certain threshold, like 0.3. If we do this, we get something like this, where the red little dot is the flower and we got grass is green and water is blue. Now, as you can see, there is only a single flower, as those specific conditions only happen in that one spot. Now, let's try setting the thresholds to 0.0, .0 instead of 0.3, and let's see how that changes things. Now, what I've done for my game is I take these different layers and then I add names to them, so just so that I can keep track of it myself, such as, such as elevation, humidity, temperature, and then I figure out, okay, so where would a forest be? It would probably be where the temperature is somewhere in the middle and the elevation is not too much, not too little. The gameplay that you're looking at right now in the background in this video is of my game Zombie that I'm working on. And yes, it's Zombie with an S. And I'm following the road at the moment. And the roads actually are quite interesting because the way that they are built is they're on a grid system. So they're always straight. They don't curve around like regular Berlin noise would do. Uh, but then they are following towards the nearest city. So if you're following the road, you're more likely to uh, bump into a city. And the way that it does that is actually just Perlin noise. So the area of a city is determined by Perlin noise. And the way that the roads know where to go is that they're looking for higher values of city. Let's say that there's a threshold of 0 0.5 where there's actually a city. If the, uh, the computer can figure out, okay, the noise level is going up very, very slowly, gradually, but it's going up. Then it knows that direction is going to be closer to where the city is. So it evaluates that every time it places one of these sections of road. And in the cities, we have sidewalk. There we have a uh, an override that is not noise-based, but logic-based. So we can say, at the edge of the road, we add a road edge. And at the edge of the road edge, we add a sidewalk edge, etc., etc. As of making this video, we just launched our Steam page. We still haven't really talked about the game so much, and we still haven't 
officially announced that this game exists on Steam until now. But we would be very, very grateful for anyone that takes the time to look at the Steam page and read through and understand what the game is about and adding it to wishlist if you're interested. What it is, is an online zombie survival MMO game where you play in a vast open world that is infinite, where you are going to go together with other players exploring this land, finding gear, crafting new weapons, and then leveling up your character. This is my first ever dev vlog, so I don't really know what I'm doing, so please do give feedback in the comments and let me know if this is something that you're interested in, and let me know what else you would like me to cover about the game. Maybe how I made the nuts code, how the movement works in the game, I don't know. Maybe how the menus work, although our menus are not that interesting, believe me. But anything and everything is something that I would be willing to cover. So let me know. Thank you for watching and goodbye.